Lesson 5-9, Complex Numbers. Uh, we talked about this before. We had some square roots of negative numbers, and we said no real solution. We just kind of called it a day. I did hint that we can write a solution to this. Um, we'll go through that now. A negative often appears under a radical. For example, square root of negative 1. This stops us. You know, we're, oh, no real solution. But Euler, which now a lot of people pronounce Euler, says, hey, why don't we come up with I? Actually, it was Descartes. I've seen, uh, I've seen it written both ways that one was Descartes, one was Euler. He said square root of negative 1, we'll just call it I. It's imaginary. You can't actually find the square root of negative 1, not in the real world. So I is just the square root of negative 1. If you square it, you get negative 1. If you take it to the third, you're basically saying i squared is negative 1 times i. You get negative i. If you take it to the fourth, you're saying negative 1 times i squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is one. When you get to i to the fifth, you end up right back where you started. It's i. i to the sixth. i to the third. i to the fourth. So on and so on. So you get 45th, you say, well, 44 plus 1. I mean, you're here, so you basically get I. The 100th is actually just like I to the 4th, which is 1. It's a, it's a problem that pops up on the ACT every now and then, and you have to logic it out a little bit. I have to go back and do 1, 2, 3, 4 to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Imaginary numbers come in very useful in higher level math. I believe it's second or third uh, semester a uh, year. No, semester of calculus has uh, some stuff, and then it pops up in uh, electrical engineering, places like that. I think mathematicians really like it because it resolves problems. Instead of saying no solution, we can say, oh, the solution is 3i or whatever. Um, I also think they like it because it really gives you some, some innovative problems that you can ask. So to simplify this, you get negative 14 times i squared, which is negative 14 times negative 1, which is just 14. Now, this one confuses people. They see the two negatives. I know I see them, and they think, oh, they'll cancel out. But you have to rewrite it first. You have to say it's i times square root of 10 times i times square root of 15. So you get i squared, which is negative 1. So this is negative 1 times square root of 150, which is negative square root of 25 times square root of 6. Negative 5 root 6. You can try some more on your own. I'll go through them. Pause if you don't want me to do the solution right away. Same thing over here, x squared is negative 4, square root of both sides, x equals plus or minus 2i. People are getting used to, but working with imaginary numbers is really not that difficult. It's just a slightly different frame of mind. They're always written 
in the complex form. So up above you saw 4i, well that's 0 plus 4i. And we call this the real part. And this the imaginary part. So, you know that, you know that this and this and this, no, not that, are going to be equivalent to this because the real parts have to be the same on each side. So, 3x minus 3 equals 3. And y minus 4 equals 2y equals 2. y equals 6. x equals 2. Silly little problem, just gives you practice. Just recognize anything without an eye in front of it has to equal the same thing on the other side. Anything with an eye in front of it has to equal the same thing on the other side. That's it. So you can also add subtract, just add and subtract the real parts. 6 minus 4 is 2. Negative 4i plus 2i is negative 2i. Distribute your negative. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 3 plus 3i is gone. Also multiply. Not that challenging. 7 minus 5i plus 21i. minus 15i squared, 7 minus plus 16i plus 15, hopefully you recognize that this is plus 15, 715 is 22 plus 16i, a lot of people want to factor that, you don't need to. So I is the square root. Can't have a radical on the bottom. I don't know what you're thinking. Really? Again? Multiply by I over I. On the bottom you get 2I squared. On the top you get negative 1 plus 5I over negative 2. You know, self-respecting math teacher ever leaves the negative on the bottom. Done. And last but not least, just like with the square root, multiply by the comp conjugate. In this case, we call it the complex conjugate. These are complex numbers. I wrote that up top. Here we are. Complex numbers. Meaning they have an a, a real part and an imaginary part. 2 minus 4i. 2 minus 4i. Up top we get 6i minus 12i squared. Let's just keep going for the fun of it. 12 plus 6i. On the bottom we get 4 minus 16i squared. The middle terms drop out, they cancel. Whole reason we multiply by the conjugate. So we're going to get a nice clean number here. It's going to be 4 plus 16. Take 2 out of each one. That's it. Hopefully. This makes sense. It is a different way of thinking, the concept of I. It's a great introduction to higher mathematics where you have to do stuff sometimes on an article of faith. That's it. Good luck.